Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Frank Torres Pink for Bone Wash Process Columbia from Hydrangea Coffee Roasters. And there's the bag right there. And Hydrangea, based out of Berkeley, California. And there are coffee roasters that's appeared on this channel on multiple occasions, including in our most recent American and Canadian coffee roaster tier list. Before recording that tier list, I'd actually reached out to Bill of Hydrangea, asking for some suggestions on coffees to review to help with our placement of them on that list. And even though that tier list came out before these reviews, this is one of two coffees that heavily impacted our placement of them on that list. And I'm looking forward to discussing both of them beginning with this Columbia, as this right here is day 37. And recipe we went with for this coffee was our standard recipe at a 16 to 1 water to coffee ratio, brewed at 96 degrees Celsius, about 205 degrees Fahrenheit. And I liked this one best through the V60, which indicates a more medium fine grind roast profile for this coffee. So I don't have too much familiarity with this coffee roaster, but from what I can tell based off of our previous reviews, this coffee actually came out a little bit lighter than some of the other ones we've had from them in the past, which does lend me to believing that they might start roasting on the slightly lighter side of things, as this coffee is a fair bit lighter than I would say the majority of American coffee roasters. That being said, it's not necessarily an overly light coffee, but I still feel like a lot of people would maybe align this one with being on the lighter side of that medium light in terms of that roast profile. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 14, first impression, and we did opt for the V60, and the first thing I noticed was that this coffee had a very nice level of sweetness, offering a fair bit of citrus, and what I would describe as on this first impression being reminiscent of a yuzu gummy. Very forward in terms of the sweetness with a nice complementary brightness to it as well. Some very deep stone fruits were also present within the cup, as well as a bit of the caramelized aspect, which I believe can be attributed to the probat. If I recall correctly, then I believe that Hydrangea initially rested on the probat, and I assume probably still does. Nonetheless, a lot of really positive things to take away from that first impression. Day 16 through the Chemex, and the cup was offering a bit more tropicality this time as the yuzu-like citrus was present once again with a notable amount of sweetness to it as well. A slight bit of the listed stone fruits also present in a sweeter sense with the cup offering a very slight fruit bitterness, but for the most part, the first two tries of this coffee were both pretty nice. We continue on to day 19 as we opted for the April Brewer, and it continues to remain a bit intense for a wash processed coffee, which I'm not complaining about whatsoever, as there's a nice level of sweetness to it. There's a fair bit of stone fruits and an otherwise citric forward cup, more of the caramelized aspect yet again, as the cup has been pretty consistent up to this point, but it's also varying in the focus of the flavor attributes of this one, as sometimes it feels like it's a little bit more on the citric side of things, other times it feels like it's a little bit more on the caramelized aspect side of things. Nonetheless, it's been sweet in general, so definitely liking the first handful of experiences. Continue on to day 22, opted for some higher temperatures and a more fine grind. And interestingly, it was near the best it had been up to this point as this really seemed to help with a lot of the more citric bright attributes of this one. This time it felt a little bit more lingering and in a longer lasting sense as this seemed to just give it a little bit more of a lingering profile to it with these adjustments. In addition to that, there's some very nice clarity with a bit of sweetness that's pretty well defined as far as the stone fruit aspects go. It's slightly sugary, a little bit more in line with the listed apricot, which definitely made a lot of sense. Slightly less of the caramelized sweetness, but it's still present as it seems to focus a little bit more on the citric side of things, which isn't necessarily going to appeal to me too much. Continue on to day 25 as we opted for the Chemex with the same adjustments. And this one did require a fair bit of a cool down as right off of brew, it offers an uneven brightness to it as it cools off into a much more candied sweet sense. Significantly more focus on the florality, which is something that I haven't necessarily mentioned too much up to this point as it has a little bit of that kind of darker floral aspect to it. Plenty of lingering citrus as well present within the finish, and we move on to day 28 as we ran it back through the V60 with our standard recipe, and it was back to being the best we'd experienced of this coffee as it feels like it is improving as well. It is offering the most defined level of sweetness to this point. The citrus is better balanced as well as the florality, brown candy sweetness coming through a little bit more as the cup is continuing to improve day by day. 
continue on to day 31 through the V60. And it's another nice day of the coffee as at this moment, I felt like the coffee is just incrementally improving. So each day it gets ever so slightly better as this was another example of that. There's a growing bit of the stone fruit intensity as well as the candied sweetness, a bit of brightness, but for the most part, it has been pretty consistent up to this point. And then day 34, final notes we have, mostly ran out of space for these notes, but one more try through the V60 and after a bit of a cool down, it opens up into a lot more of a candied sweet forward coffee. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. And we have uh, quite a few level fours, so let's go through those real quick. And we'll start with the cleanliness level four. No qualms whatsoever about the cleanliness. I would say that there's a fair bit of definition to all the attributes that are present within this one. Pretty clean cup of coffee, a very typical level four for cleanliness, clarity for this coffee in general. Don't really have too much to add to that. It's a very nice, enjoyable part of this coffee. Finish level four. And I mentioned on one of the days when we kind of pushed this one a little bit more that there was a much more lingering, long-lasting finish to it. Aside from that, I would say that it has a little bit more just even of a finish in general. The coffee, for the most part, feels very even, at least in terms of the balance and the finish to this one. So don't really have too much to add to that. Both those things being at the level four are just basically true level fours for this coffee. Sweetness level four. Yeah, first note I took away from this coffee. And I don't always have the most sweet impression of pink for bone coffees. Oftentimes they can skew a little bit more on the bright side of things or even the citric side of things. This one, on the other hand, the first focus I found was on the sweetness. And I really wanted to emphasize that a little bit more than the, I would say, typical characteristics of that pink for bone. But I think maybe a combination of factors really seemed to help in terms of the sweetness for this coffee as it did have, I would say, above average sweetness for this varietal. Continue on to acidity level four. And yeah, this one had a fair bit of brightness. Once again, that's in line with the varietal a little bit more so than probably most other coffees that would be similar to this one as there's just a fair bit of brightness right from the onset. And it was pretty lingering throughout this coffee. Don't really have too much to add to that as we continue on to the florality level four. And it's something that's maybe been a little downplayed within this coffee as I feel like it was a little bit hidden behind a lot of the more fruit forward profiles of this one, but it had a really nice delicacy to it, at least in a more subtle sense behind all of those really strong and defining fruit attributes of this coffee. So it was something that I also seemed to enjoy about this coffee. Continue on to the citrus fruit level four. And even though I don't really know what the main descriptor that they have on here, what that is, to me, this coffee just felt a little bit more citric forward than anything else. As I would say that that was the most dominant profile within this coffee. However, it was present within a sweeter sense. So I don't necessarily mind that as I could say that it's a little bit more in line with a undefined sweeter citric profile to it. And while I've said that there's great clarity and definition to it, I couldn't necessarily pinpoint exactly which fruit I would say it's closest to in terms of that citrus fruit, as I feel like it's maybe a little bit more of a tropical fruit that I don't have as much familiarity with. Then you on to the stone fruit level four and the apricot note that they have on here, I'm very happy with mostly because there were times where I said, wow, there's some really nice stone fruits within this one, a little bit more in that kind of sugary jammy sense. But even with them being present there, I would say that there's enough of a definition to it that it is definitely justified at that level four mark. Continue on to basically just two level threes. We'll start with the berry fruit level three. And I think that is mostly in line once again to the tropical berries that are present within this one, maybe something like a bit more of a subtle passion fruit component to it. Just a little bit more of those, we'll say tropical berries that were present within this one. Also in line with that citric fruit component that I couldn't necessarily quite put my finger on, even if it was, I would say pretty well articulated. And then final level three is the caramel. And I had mentioned pretty early on in this one that it had a nice candied and caramelized sweetness to this coffee. And that seemed to really help with the rest of it. And if this coffee is roasted with a probat, which once again, I'm pretty sure is, it makes a lot of sense because that's something that I typically experience and really enjoy specifically about that machine, but I could be wrong for all I know. And then the final thing I think we're discussing is the body at a level two as I was making this coffee with, well, making this tasting with the other hydrangea coffee. And I think I was surprised that this body was a little bit lighter than maybe expected for this one, but yeah, it's a little bit more of that kind of light medium, a little bit less texture in general to this one. As I was fumbling around with where I wanted to put it on the two and the three, but I said, it skews a little bit more towards that lighter side of things. So level two it is. But as I'm looking at this tasting wheel, I do think it's a pretty good representation of what I was getting from this coffee. 
All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee. I have quite a few thoughts actually. And one of the first things I wanted to say is when we were discussing hydrangeas placement on that tier list, I said the last two coffees really seemed to help them and it made me want to put them in that great category. If I was judging hydrangea just based off of the two coffees that we're going to be discussing from them, then they would definitely make it into that great category. So I felt like this was a very nice representation of a Colombian pink for bone coffee mostly because it's skewed a little bit more on the sweeter side of things for me, which is definitely going to appeal to me a lot more. And in addition to that, I just wanted to say that there are a lot of really positive things to take away from this. As I mentioned in the past, that they seem to be trending in the right direction with a lot of the things that they're doing. And this was a very pretty cup of coffee. And I wish once again, that maybe they focus a little bit more on the wash processed coffees, because it does go to show that oftentimes when coffee roasters do their washed versions of the coffees, they turn out significantly better. And I end up liking the coffee roaster a lot more specifically because of their washed offerings. So this is a great example of this. This isn't going to be a game changer for me. I found it to just be a very good cup of coffee, but it definitely did improve my opinion of this coffee roaster as a whole, just because of how much I enjoyed this one. Type of person I would suggest this coffee to. I feel like if you like the classic characteristics of pink for bone coffees, but you're looking for them in a little bit more of a sweeter sense, and this is an ideal fit for you because that's the best way I looked at it. I do like pink for bone coffees, not necessarily because of those really bright attributes, mostly because I'm kind of curious what definition, what level of clarity I'm going to get from them and what sort of notes I can pick out from them. And while it was really fun to pick that out from this coffee, what really seemed to help me enjoy it a little bit more than the expectation was just how much of a nice candied sweet aspect there was present with in this one, as I really wasn't expecting this level of sweetness, but I was definitely glad that we did experience it. So that's the best direction I can point somebody towards for this one, and the best way I can leave this review. If you by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee, I'd love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Frank Torres Pink for Bone, Wash Process Columbia from Hydrangea Coffee Roasters. Thank you for watching.